You're watching the news on Bahrain International. I'm Mohammed Shaban. Good evening. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received today at Safriya Palace the United Kingdom's Defense Senior Advisor for the Middle East, Lieutenant General Sir John Lorimer. His Majesty welcomed Sir John Lorimer and hailed the deep rooted historic relations between Bahrain and the UK, highlighting the joint cooperation and coordination between the two kingdoms, especially in the defense and military fields. His Majesty affirmed the mutual keenness to develop these relations for the benefit of both countries and their people. His Majesty praised the international role of the United Kingdom and its contribution in consolidating security and stability in the region and the world. During the meeting, they reviewed regional and international developments as well as a number of topics of mutual concern. For his part, Sir John expressed appreciation of His Majesty's efforts to strengthen historic ties of friendship and reinforce military and defense cooperation between the two friendly countries, hailing Bahrain's role and contribution in establishing peace and security in the region. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received today at Safriya Palace Sheikh Hamad bin Rashid Al Jabr Al Naimi and his sons to greet His Majesty the King on the occasion of their visit to the kingdom. His Majesty welcomed the guests, hailing the deep rooted historic relations between Bahrain and Saudi Arabia and the family ties between the two countries' people. His Majesty commended the development and prosperity of Saudi Arabia during the era of the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud, wishing Sheikh Hamad bin Rashid and his sons success. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa witnessed in the presence of the Commander in Chief of the Bahrain Defense Force, Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, the final stage of the joint exercise Samoom 3, which took place over several days with live ammunition in the Kingdom of Bahrain between the Bahrain Defense Force and the United Arab Emirates Armed Forces. Upon arrival, His Majesty the King was received by the exercise instructor, Commander of the Royal Guard, Brigadier General, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the Royal Guard Special Force Commander, His Highness Major Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa and a number of senior officers. His Majesty toured the exercise operation area and His Highness Sheikh Nasser briefed His Majesty on the course of the exercise and the stages of implementation as well as the success achieved to reach the desired goals.
A number of Bahraini and Emirati officers participating in the exercise greeted His Majesty the King, where he congratulated them on the success they achieved in executing the joint operations. His Majesty the King welcomed the UAE Armed Forces in Bahrain, affirming that the exercise stems from the deep historic and strategic relations between the two countries in military and defense fields and contributes to increasing combat readiness and exchanging expertise to face various challenges that threaten the region's security. His Majesty commended the unity of the two countries' armed forces and the Restoring Hope operation led by the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, which represents a model of historic and brotherly unity between the two countries and their strong positions against all forms of terrorism. His Majesty the King expressed thanks and appreciation to His Highness Sheikh Nasser for directing the exercise and for his efforts to develop the Royal Guard's combat competencies. His Majesty expressed pride in the Royal Guard and the Bahrain Defense Force for their great efforts in performing their noble duties inside and outside the country, wishing them success. The visit was attended by the Chief of Staff. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, visited today the Saudi Embassy on the occasion of the Saudi National Day. His Royal Highness expressed keenness on participating in the celebrations to express appreciation to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, led by the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud, affirming that every Saudi should take pride in the leadership that made remarkable national, regional, and international achievements. His Royal Highness stated that the Saudi National Day is a special day for the people of Bahrain, as much as it is for the people of Saudi Arabia, affirming that. 
world countries should support Saudi Arabia in its security maintaining stances. His Royal the Prime Minister congratulated the custodian of the two holy mosques and the Saudi Crown Prince, First Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Defense, Prince Mohammed bin Salman bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud, and the Saudi people on the occasion, wishing them many happy returns and to Saudi Arabia further progress and prosperity. His Royal hailed Saudi Arabia's development in all fields under its wise leadership, who made ample achievements for the benefit of the Saudi people. He also commended the efforts of Saudi Arabia in serving holy places. For his part, the Saudi ambassador to Bahrain, Dr. Abdullah bin Abdul Malik al Sheikh, expressed thanks and appreciation to His Royal Highness the Prime Minister for his visit to the embassy to participate in the celebrations. He noted His Royal Highness's keenness on developing bilateral cooperation in all fields, stressing that Bahraini Saudi relations are distinguished for being based on respect.
His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman al-Khalifa, received the Aqdabiya Palace today a number of royal family members and officials. During the meeting, His Royal Highness reviewed a number of local affairs and affirmed the Bahraini people's passion for work, which guaranteed the kingdom's achieving leadership in all fields. His Royal Highness stated that the Bahraini society is a model of communication and solidarity and urged citizens to maintain these Bahraini values. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa received today the British Defence Senior Advisor for the Middle East Lieutenant General Sir John Lorimer and his accompanying delegation. His Royal Highness affirmed that the Middle East is of strategic and fundamental importance and that its security and stability is vital and important not only to the countries of the region but to the world. The Prime Minister expressed his support to all efforts that reinforce stability. His Royal Highness added that the interference in the internal affairs of countries is unacceptable because it increases tensions and conflicts. He said that bilateral meetings between officials are essential to achieve better understanding on various issues, expressing aspirations that friendly and brotherly countries would give more support to maintain security and stability in the region. His Royal Highness and Sir John Lorma reviewed Bahraini-UK relations and cooperation, praising the strength of these relations, which are witnessing progress in various fields, including cooperation in defense and military affairs. The meeting also reviewed the regional and international developments and discussed issues of common concern. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa today announced the launch of Bahrain's first government innovation competition, Fikra, which offers public sector employees the opportunity to put forward their suggestions on innovation and development of governmental services via a digital platform. The initiative, which was spearheaded by the Government Executive Committee led by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, was launched at the office of the First Deputy Prime Minister at Glebia Palace. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince highlighted that the innovation competition represents a new milestone in promoting excellence across key sectors. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince also highlighted that expanding the contribution of public sector employees to the innovation of government services is a testament to Bahrain's commitment to continue placing citizens at the heart of sustainable development efforts. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince went on to stress that Bahrain's economic vision 2030, guided by the principles of sustainability, competitiveness and fairness, continues to drive initiatives and development programs that benefit citizens while improving public services and Bahrain's regional and international standings. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince concluded by emphasizing the positive role the competition will have in bringing together modern and fresh perspectives on a wide range of projects and services. 
His Royal the Crown Prince Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa met today the United Kingdom's Defence Senior Advisor for the Middle East, Lieutenant General Sir John Lorimer, at the Galabia Palace. During the meeting, His Royal emphasized the long-standing ties between Bahrain and the United Kingdom, noting existing strategic bilateral cooperation. His Royal the Crown Prince stressed Bahrain and the UK's joint commitment to regional security, stability, and prosperity, and highlighted both countries' efforts towards achieving these goals. His Royal also noted the need for the international community to continue to coordinate effectively to counter intolerance and extremism. His Royal the Crown Prince and Lieutenant General Sir John also discussed other issues related to shared strategic goals and interests. His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa and the Chief of Staff of the Bahrain Defense Force, Lieutenant General Diab bin Sagr al Naimi, also attended the meeting. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa met yesterday the Crown Prince of Abu Dhabi and Deputy Supreme Commander of the UAE Armed Forces, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan, at the Sea Palace Majlis in Abu Dhabi. His Royal Highness and His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed discussed historic bilateral ties and emphasized the crucial role of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and the President of the UAE, His Highness Sheikh Khalifa bin Zayed Al Nahyan, in strengthening these ties and advanced shared interests between the two countries. His Royal Highness stressed the importance of building on and expanding the existing solid base of cooperation between Bahrain and the UAE on mutual areas of interest. In this regard, His Royal Highness highlighted the UAE's role in supporting shared goals of development and collaborative programs across the region. His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed welcomed His Royal Highness's visit and praised the strength of bilateral ties between the UAE and Bahrain. Royal family members of the UAE and senior Emirati officials, Deputy Prime Minister Sheikh Mohammed bin Mubarak Al Khalifa and a number of senior Bahraini officials also attended the meeting.
The Royal Guard Commander Brigadier General His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa attended today an honoring ceremony for forces participating in the joint exercise Samum 3 in the presence of the Royal Guard Special Force Commander His Highness Major Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa performed by the Bahrain Defense Force represented by the Royal Guard and a group of United Arab Emirates armed forces with live ammunition. The Royal Guard Commander delivered a speech in which he welcomed the UAE Armed Forces Group wishing them a pleasant stay in Bahrain. He hailed the performances of the BDF forces and the UAE armed forces in the joint exercise and their efforts and readiness as well as their planning. Lieutenant Colonel Mohamed Lblouchi from the UAE Armed Forces also delivered a speech in which he thanked all the officials and the BDF and Royal Guard for the warm welcome and generous hospitality noting the benefit that they derived from the exercise and wishing the kingdom further security and stability. Commander of the Royal Guard Force Major Group Sheikh Khalid bin Ali Al Khalifa also delivered a welcoming speech in which he thanked the Royal Guard Commander for patronizing the ceremony. The Royal Guard Commander exchanged commemorative gifts with the UAE Group Commander and the forces participating in the exercise, expressing thanks and appreciation and wishing them success. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa deputized the President of the Bahrain Basketball Association, His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Ali bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, to attend the reception hosted by the Ambassador of Indonesia to Bahrain, Nur Shahir Rahargo, to mark Indonesia's National Day. Also present were senior officials, diplomats and invited guests. He conveyed the congratulations of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister to the Indonesian leadership and people and wished the country and its people continued progress and prosperity. He stressed the keenness of Bahrain to develop cooperation with Indonesia in all fields based on common interests for the benefit of both countries and their people. For his part, the ambassador expressed thanks and appreciation to the Prime Minister for supporting bilateral cooperation between the two countries, noting the development witnessed by Bahrain in various sectors. A work meeting was held in New York today in the presence of the Minister of Cabinet Affairs Mohammed bin Ibrahim Al Mtawa and Sheikh Hassan bin Isa Al Khalifa with members of the Committee of the Nobel Peace Prize laureates and leaders for children including President of Kailash Satirati Foundation for Children Kailash Satirati the first lady and wife of the President of the Republic of Panama Lorena Varela and Miss Carrie Kennedy he stressed the uh, kingdom's keenness to extend bridges of communication and cooperation with international organizations in various fields Sheikh Hassan bin Isa highlighted the importance of the visit of the Nobel Peace Prize laureates delegation to Bahrain and their fruitful meetings with His Royal Highness the Prime Minister. He stressed that the visit was a historic opportunity to brief these elite leaders on Bahrain's development and progress achievements. 
The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, conveyed the greetings of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and those of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander, and First Deputy Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, to the President of the United States, Donald Trump, wishing him good health and happiness and for Americans further progress and prosperity. The Minister of Foreign Affairs also conveyed their pride in the historic relations between the two countries and the two friendly people and the progress and development of these relations at all levels. The foreign minister attended the reception hosted by President Donald Trump for the leaders and heads of delegations of the world countries participating in the 73rd session of the General Assembly of the United Nations in New York City. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, met with the Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, Adil bin Ahmed Al Jubair, on the sidelines of the 73rd session of the United Nations General Assembly in New York. During the meeting, the two ministers reviewed the strong brotherly relations between the Kingdom of Bahrain and the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and affirmed the continuity of joint coordination regarding various issues. The Minister of Foreign Affairs delivered a speech at the high-level meeting entitled Towards Peaceful and Inclusive Communities' Role of Religious Leaders in Achieving SDG 16 and organized by the King Hamad Global Center for Peaceful Coexistence on the sidelines of the 73rd session of the United Nations General Assembly in New York in the presence of the Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, Adel bin Ahmed al Jaber, and Secretary General of the Gulf Cooperation Council, Dr. Abdel Latif bin Rashid al-Zayani. The Minister affirmed that the Kingdom of Bahrain, under the leadership of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa al-Khalifa, is keen to continue and develop its long history as a multi-faith and multicultural community. The Minister of Foreign Affairs added that the Kingdom of Bahrain prioritizes the importance of maintaining comprehensive, peaceful and diverse societies with a variety of cultures and religions living together in peace. The Minister of Foreign Affairs hailed the pioneering initiatives of His Majesty the King to establish coexistence and tolerance amongst all. The Minister of Foreign Affairs affirmed that the constitution of the Kingdom of Bahrain guarantees religious freedom and that there is no place for religious violence and incitement to hatred and sectarianism in the Bahraini society. The Minister of Foreign Affairs also called for the necessity to increase efforts to combat extremism and religious intolerance. The Minister of Foreign Affairs concluded by stressing that importance of the role of religious figures in combating extremism and establishing useful teachings and mutual respect between people and different faiths. This is an auspicious day for the Kingdom of Bahrain to have this event for the King Hamad Center for uh, Tolerance and uh, cohabitation and also for, for the, this beautiful exhibition of the pictures that speak, the picture that talk of what Bahrain is. And uh, this is this, I, I was very pleased to hear the words and participations from uh, my colleague, the uh, Foreign Minister of Saudi Arabia. It was very nice of him. And there was also other presence from uh, other dignitaries. And uh, this is something that makes us very proud and I thank Dr. Sheikh Khalid, I thank Ms. Betsy Matheson for their efforts, for bringing all of us here. We're very proud to be here today um, uh, on the opening day of the 73rd General Assembly at the United Nations headquarters in New York. This is Bahrain and the King Hamad Global Center for Peaceful Coexistence are extremely happy to be here this year because the theme this year is global leadership leading to um, peaceful coexistence with a sustainable and equitable society for all. And of course, this is Bahrain. This is how Bahrain has lived for many centuries and it's something that under the current leadership of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa that the Kingdom of Bahrain passionately protects and develops um, and I really do feel that people here today are walking along the corridor and they are astonished when they see the wonderful exhibition of the photographs here people have been stopping to read the Kingdom of Bahrain declaration authored by His Majesty the King and it's touching people's hearts the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, participated in the consultative meeting of the Council of the League of Arab States at the ministerial level held in New York on the sidelines of the 73rd session of the United Nations General Assembly. During the meeting, means of enhancing joint Arab action, continuing coordination on various issues, and supporting Arab interests were discussed. The latest developments on the regional and international arenas were also discussed, especially the Palestinian issue, the situation in the Syrian Arab Republic, the Republic of Yemen, and the state of Libya, as well as the Iranian interference and the internal affairs of Arab countries and efforts to reach a peaceful settlement to solve the issue of the region and means of advancing these efforts. 
The Minister of Foreign Affairs also participated in the high-level meeting on the Global Call to Action on the World Drug Problem led by the U.S. President Donald Trump on the sidelines of the 73rd session of the United Nations General Assembly held in New York with the participation of world leaders. The Foreign Affairs Minister affirmed that the event reflects the international community's awareness of the danger of drugs and the importance of unifying efforts to eliminate them. He noted the efforts and initiatives of U.S. President in increasing international cooperation to face this phenomenon. The Minister noted the importance of commitment and joint work to ensure the effective countering of the drug problem and to find permanent solutions for it in conformity with international law. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, attended the high level meeting on financing the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development following the directives of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. A number of presidents and government heads participating in the 73rd session of the UN General Assembly attended the high level meeting in New York. The meeting revolved around priorities for scaling up financing for the Sustainable Development Goals, SDGs, ways to align global financial and economic policies with the 2030 Agenda, enhancing sustainable financing strategies and seizing the potential financial innovations, new technologies and digitalization to provide equitable access to finance. The Minister of Foreign Affairs participated in a high-level event on stepping up action to end forced labor, modern slavery and human trafficking hosted by the Kingdom of Bahrain, the United Kingdom, Canada, Bangladesh and Nigeria. The Minister of Foreign Affairs affirmed that the Kingdom of Bahrain has achieved considerable progress in its efforts to end forced labor, modern slavery and human trafficking. He also reviewed the efforts and initiatives done by the Kingdom of Bahrain in this field, including the ratification of international conventions relevant to this matter. The Minister of Foreign Affairs also pointed out that these efforts result in elevating the Kingdom of Bahrain to reach Tier 1 in the U.S. Department of State Trafficking in Persons report in June 2018, becoming the first country in the Middle East and North Africa to reach this rank. The Minister of Foreign Affairs stressed that the Kingdom of Bahrain will remain committed to cooperating with the international community and supporting all efforts at the multilateral level to end forced labor, trafficking in persons and modern slavery. On the sidelines of the 73rd session of the United Nations General Assembly in New York City, the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, attended an unofficial gathering of world leaders organized by the World Economic Forum, WEF, under the theme Geopolitics in the Multi-Conceptual World. The Minister of Foreign Affairs also met with the President of the World Economic Forum, Borje Brandy, where he affirmed the keenness of the Kingdom of Bahrain to consolidate cooperation with the WEF as part of its policy that is based on strengthening international relations and bilateral cooperation to to support the efforts of development in the kingdom. The Minister of Foreign Affairs commended the role of the WEF in addressing the challenges facing the international community and monitoring the international economic shifts and their impacts. The King Hamad Global Center for Peaceful Coexistence in cooperation with This Is Bahrain organized a high-level seminar entitled Towards Peaceful and Inclusive Communities, Role of Religious Leaders in Achieving SDGs 16. At the United Nations headquarters in New York City on the sidelines of the United Nations 73rd General Assembly. The seminar comes in line with the vision of His Majesty the King to promote coexistence among all religions and cultures and to promote Bahrain on the world map as a model for peaceful coexistence. The seminar was attended by the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, in the presence of the Saudi Minister of Foreign Affairs, Adil Al Jaber, the Secretary General of the Gulf Cooperation Council, Dr. Abdul Latif bin Rashid Al Zayani, NGOs, and a number of representatives of different religions and sects. The Minister affirmed that Bahrain, under the leadership of His Majesty the King, seeks to continue and develop its history of diversity and harmony. The Saudi Foreign Minister said that this distinguished initiative comes within the efforts of Bahrain to promote the values of peaceful coexistence and cooperation between countries and people. Al Jaber described the exhibition accompanying the high level seminar as Bahraini work embodying the homogeneity of all religions from all sects in Bahrain. The chairman of the center, Sheikh Khalid bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, said that Bahrain bases its regional and historical relationship, or rather leadership, on the principle of openness and diversity. The Minister of Education, Majid bin Ali Naimi, visited today one of the schools that applies the School Sports Center project. The minister viewed some of the center's activities, which are currently 25 centers distributed to 25 primary schools, supervised by a group of specialists in cooperation with a number of national sports clubs and federations. He stressed the ministry's keenness to implement projects aimed at developing student talents in various fields, including the School Sports Center's project for the primary stage, which has achieved great success by discovering and refining many talented students in 
football, basketball, and handball at an early age, including students with special needs. The minister pointed out that what distinguishes these centers is the scientific standards of accurate discovery of talented students through the implementation of a number of tests to them. The minister also reviewed the activities of the school fitness centers, including the programs related to the promotion of students' health. The ministry team met with football academies of students with special needs. Industry, Commerce and Tourism Minister Zayed bin Rashid Zayani was the guest of honor in a meeting held at the Bahrain Business Women's Society headquarters where they had an open discussion aimed at further developing the small and medium-sized enterprises SMEs sector in Bahrain. More on this report with Hiba Abdel Ghaffar. An open interactive dialogue between the government and startups, small and medium-sized enterprises, facilitates a friendlier and more profitable environment for success, with the aim of involving the private sector in decision-making by discussing the current programs and identifying the proposals of business owners. A lot of issues were raised. Some had to do with the ministry, some had to do with other government agencies. Uh, we appreciate the enthusiasm, we appreciate the, the interaction. Uh, we're always happy to interact with the business community and listen to their uh, uh, concerns, uh, learn from them. There were some valid points made tonight, uh, some pointers that in some areas that we hadn't looked at. I think it's worth investigating more and we look forward to having more and more of these dialogues. The minister listened to their concerns, answered their inquiries, and reaffirmed the government's support to SMEs through the SME Development Board, which has now started implementing a five-year plan to develop this sector with clear KPIs and deliverables in terms of number of SMEs, created Bahraini jobs, exposure to export markets, and much more, considering it as the sector with highest potential of growth. An expert development center is expected to launch by the end of the year to provide mentoring and building a database connecting SME owners around the world. Where we talk about how the government can support the SMEs. Well, we saw that we need a lot of awareness campaign, uh, we need a lot of uh, training session for the new laws, for the new uh, updating uh, systems that they have. This meeting is the first of a series of monthly meetings Bahrain Business Women's Society plans on conducting to narrow the gap between entrepreneurs and decision makers. We bring the minister direct here. We have the open majlis, okay, so um, everybody can have the question direct to him. Uh, we don't need to hear from here and there, and we need exactly to know where we are in this business. So we have, we have the minister here to have the conversation with him, questionnaire, uh, questions, and we have the right answer direct from the minister. The SME sector is the catalyst of ongoing growth, and in Bahrain, it accounts for the largest number of commercial registrations and nearly 30% of the economy, and its development is one of the main pillars of Bahrain's economic vision 2030. Many inquiries have been answered today in the open discussion with the Minister of Industry and Commerce and Tourism, who reaffirms his support to Bahraini businesswomen and growing businesses. Reporting for Bahrain International, I'm Heba Abdel Ghaffour. The Assistant Under Secretary of Housing Project, Sami Abdullah Buhazza, stated that the Ministry of Housing is currently preparing the final designs for the second phase to be constructed in Khalifa Town, which will include the construction of 1,604 housing units to be implemented in several phases during the coming period. He added that the first part of the second phase will be ready for tender at the beginning of next year and includes 400 new housing units, and that the second part of that phase, which includes 1,204 housing units, will be ready during the next phase. The Assistant Under Secretary stated that in in response to the directives of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister on the necessity of providing all services and main facilities in the housing project, the Minister of Housing, Basim bin Yaqub al-Hamar, directed to prepare the plan for the second stage. He noted that the Khalifa Town project is of great interest to the government as it is one of the cornerstones of the government's current program of building 25,000 housing units. The Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs strongly condemned the abuses and the irresponsible acts that took place in some places during the Ashura. In a statement issued today, the Council stressed that these unfortunate violations are outside the law and norms and have nothing to do with Ashura rituals, and these are deliberate attempts to provoke chaos and cover the great success of the Ashura season and the misuse of the extensive religious freedoms offered by the Kingdom of Bahrain under the leadership of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. The Council called on concerned parties to take deterrent measures to stop such violations and 
and to hold accountable all those involved, anyone who violates public order harm to the homeland, tramples on its symbols and constants or seeks to politicize religious rights and exploit the freedoms available to provoke sedition and chaos. The council called on all those concerned to bear the religious and national responsibility and solidarity among themselves, to stand firmly against the suspicious elements to safeguard religious rights and freedoms and to prevent them from politicizing and exploiting the rituals in order to maintain Bahrain's security, stability and safeguard its gains.